Morning guys, welcome back to Sloop's Garage. Uh, this morning, we're gonna be working on the Corolla. We're gonna be doing a uh, transmission drain and refill and also replace the uh, filter inside the transmission. So what we got here is the gasket for the pan on the transmission. It's part number 35168-52020. We have a Wix filter, it's 58324. And it looks something like this. And then of course we have our Toyota WS ATF fluid. I have approximately three and a half quarts. Uh, I bought six quarts to begin with. I've already done a drain and refill on it once. Uh, it took about two and a half quarts to do that. So. I should have plenty left over to go ahead and drop the pan, do the filter, and uh, you know, top it back off. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and drain the transmission. Uh, let me grab the tools for that and we'll get set up. All right, we're under the car here and uh, the right side pan is gonna be your transmission pan. And back here, You'll see that drain pan, or uh, that drain bolt, that takes a 10 millimeter hex Allen head, which is that guy there. So I got mine on a 3 8 ratchet. I'm going to go ahead and pop that loose and uh, get it draining. So I'll be right back. Alright, so while that's draining, I wanted to show you the condition of my fluid. Um, obviously it's not red like it should be it is a lot better than it used to be um, since i've already done one drain and refill so this is why we're doing this it's got 127,000 miles on it at this point so it's been due to have the transmission fluid drain and refilled a few times so that's why we're doing this procedure but i'm gonna go ahead and let it drain and then we'll uh i'll come back and we'll start pulling the uh the pan off the transmission so we can get to the filter be right back all right guys so the next thing we're going to be doing is tackling the perimeter bolts around the pan there's 19 of them they're 10 millimeter i'm going to go ahead and just set you guys up on time lapse while i pull them off so here we go All right, we got our pan off. So your filter's here, and it is retained by three 10 millimeters. Um, so we'll go ahead, pull that off. Uh, I'm not gonna show that on camera. It's three 10 millimeter bolts, then you just drop it down. There is an O-ring around the lip. Um, you wanna make sure that doesn't get stuck up inside the transmission. Um, I'll show you that once I get it pulled out. So be right back. So I got the filter out, it's sitting down in the pan and my O-ring actually stuck in here. So I wanted to show you guys this. So you wanna make sure you get this O-ring out because the new filter will have a new O-ring with it. And you don't wanna to try to smash two O-rings in there together. It won't seal properly and it'll just cause issues. So make sure you pull that out. All right guys, so here's our pan and our old filter. Um, before you actually swap the filter, make sure they actually match. Um, they do match, the holes line up, the actual part where it goes into the transmission is the same and it has an o-ring on it like I said. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to clean out the pan. This is a magnet right here and 
it picks up like clutch material and you know wear and tear from the you know just use so I'll clean those up real good I'll clean the whole pan out get the old gasket off of it and then uh, I'll go ahead and install the new filter it's the reverse order pull an old one out 310 millimeters like I said make sure you get the old o-ring out and then just reinstall the old one or the new one I'll clean this out reinstall it and then we'll come back and start uh, putting fluid on it so I'll be right back all right guys we got our pan cleaned out I decided to come back give you a little update here so these are the magnets they're nice and clean um, they're not perfect but I they are a lot cleaner than they were so I'll I'll clean those up a little better um, make sure you put those back in they go here where these little cutouts are well not they're, they're not cutouts they're dense look like I'm getting the pan dirty again but uh I just wanted to show you guys this stuff so this is leftover old gasket so I'm gonna take a scotch bright pad nothing too abrasive I don't want to lose any metal here um, and try to get rid of this stuff most of it's just scraping off with my fingernail so I'm just gonna get a Brillo pad or scotch bright pad and scrub all the way around the perimeter till it's all that stuff's off and then we'll go ahead and reinstall everything so be back shortly all right, we got our new filter up in there. Um, we got our drain pan on. It is not torqued yet. I just have all the bolts started. Um, so I looked up the specs, and what I found was you torque the perimeter bolts to 48 inch pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. Um, and then we'll go ahead. I'll uh, throw the drain bolt back in and I'll tell you what the torque specs for the, that is uh, whenever I'm done and we start the next uh, clip so uh, I'll be right back all right so we got our uh, drain pan back on I torqued all the bolts I went around probably four times um, just to make sure they were all actually torqued because with that gasket in there once you uh, smash it down your torque values are going to change on the rest of the bolts around it. So I went around four times until um, it clicked instead of spinning, you know, a little bit. And what I'm talking about is a torque wrench clicking over. Um, so just go around, make sure you click on all of them. If you get a little bit of a turn before it clicks, go all the way around again. Um, just making sure that those are all torqued properly so I went ahead and torqued the drain pan I'm sorry the drain bolt um, to 18 foot-pounds so that's good to go um, I'm gonna start putting fluid in it so I'll get you guys set up and we'll start putting fluid in it all right guys so what I ended up doing was I drained the uh, old fluid that was in the, the drain pan uh, and I put it here in this container so it's showing just above actually I'm way up here so just about three and a half quarts um, I might have made a boo-boo here because I only have exactly three and a half quarts this doesn't account for what was left in the pan, what's left in the filter, what's left in my drain pan. So I have just over three and a half quarts. So half would be approximately down here. So I might get lucky. Um, this might end up being a little low. So we'll see what happens when we uh, put all this fluid in. The reason I did this was just to give us an idea of how much I need to put in. That way I'm not putting the cord in, pull, putting the stick in, checking it, all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and put everything I have in it, which is right at about three and a half quarts. And we'll, uh, we'll check the dipstick once we get it running and stuff. All right, so we got our fluid topped off. Uh, I don't know what it's at. I haven't checked it with the dipstick. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pull the funnel put the dipstick in, start the car, and I'll uh, check it when it's running in park. So, be right back. 
probably should have mentioned this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in the car, start it. I'm going to take it from park. I'm going to put it in reverse, let it sit there for about 10 seconds. Followed up by neutral for 10 seconds, drive for 10 seconds, third for 10 seconds, second. Yeah, you, you're getting the idea. Hit every gear for 10 seconds, and then when I go back up to go to park, I put it, I leave it there for 10 seconds as well. So about 20 seconds overall for uh, every gear. So that way it gives the fluid a time to uh, cycle through. Make sure you put your foot on the brake. You don't want to roll forward or you know, kill anybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna leave the car running. I'll turn the video back on. We'll pull the dipstick and see what we're at. All right guys, so I got the car running in park. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the stick, wipe it off, put it back in, and then I'm gonna try to show you what I have on the stick. Not sure how well you're gonna be able to see this, but I'm really low. So, when you guys do this, if this is your only vehicle, make sure you got enough fluid. Don't be dumb like I am. I obviously don't have enough fluid. So, I'm not gonna drive this until I get more fluid in it. I'm gonna pull it up in the driveway, let it sit there until uh, I might be able to run to the dealership tomorrow and pick up more fluid. I ordered this on Amazon. It tends to be a little cheaper on Amazon. But, uh, yeah, so, don't be like me, don't be an idiot, don't do this if you don't have enough fluid, if it's your only vehicle. So that's it for this one guys, sorry uh, I didn't have enough fluid, sorry if there's too much wind. Uh, I really appreciate everybody tuning in, subscribing, watching my videos, giving them a thumbs up. So as always, like, share, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.